Hey up everyone, I'm back again. So uh, I managed to pick up this nice little trinket from Sony called the Xperia M2, which is a successor to the original Xperia M, which was a handset that many people probably didn't even notice. It kind of slipped under the radar, uh, but it did offer quite decent specs for very little money. And uh, Sony's up the ante in regards to the Xperia M2. Uh, outfitting it with a quad-core processor uh, along with the bigger display uh, 4G connectivity as well uh, so all for a, quite a decent price of uh, roughly under 200 quid from most places uh, when you pick up the handset you can see that uh, it has the same type of philosophy as uh, some of Sony's more higher-end handsets uh, apart from the change in regards to the camera position, you could mistake this for an Xperia Z1, uh, which uh, is really good of Sony to keep with the design philosophy uh, at such a budget price. It certainly feels solid in the hand, like it's built to last, uh, and the smaller size of the screen allows you to uh, get your thumb around it. It is a, a 4.8 inch screen. Uh, it does uh, have a 8 megapixel camera as well as flash. Uh, it does have NFC as you can see the logo there. Uh, on the side you've got uh, nice easy to access buttons. The power button which is a signature of Sony smartphones. Uh, as long, along with the volume rocker and the uh, shutter button, which is nice to see. Uh, there's no, you can't hardly see where the speaker is on the device, but it is actually on the bottom. Uh, so that's uh, also quite a nice bonus. It's not being muffled on the back. Uh, it uh, does have uh, the ability to expand uh, the storage as well. Uh, via a micro SD somewhere on the device uh, and uh, that would be on the side here via a flat so it does support cards up to I think it's 32 gigabytes uh, and the micro SD does go in there as well so uh, all in all it's a very nice design for the uh, price that you're paying. It does feel a bit more premium than the Samsung handsets. Uh, it does feel a bit sharp around the edges, kind of like the Xperia Z1, uh, but the smaller size makes it much more comfortable in the hand. Uh, so yeah, it's got it's, uh, quite a nice design to it. Uh, in regards to the display, it's not a full HD unfortunately, but it is uh, quite a nice uh, 720p uh, display at uh, 229 ppi uh, and it does have uh, 540 by 960 pixels I think that's considered 720p uh, or it could be QHD uh, but uh, either way I've not really noticed it uh, which uh, is a testament to it being you know a decent display uh, like uh, some of the other Sony handsets, however, it does have that issue with viewing angles. Although it doesn't seem to be as pronounced as the Xperia Z1. Uh, if I just show you a comparison, as you can see, the, the, Z, the Z1 really does tend to wash out at, at angles. Uh, but uh, the, color, the colors on the M2 seem to hold a bit better. It's not perfect, but I think uh, most people will notice a slight improvement on the screens of these Z1 era. Uh, so uh, the, pic the pixel density does uh, mean that you may have to zoom in a little bit when looking at text on uh, web pages. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's going to be a given for this type of uh, PPI uh, but uh, in general 
you know, as you can see, text appears very readable and legible. No real issues in regards to the low PPI. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, the display is definitely decent. It's not the best display by any means, uh, but for the price that you're paying, I think that uh, it's just uh, probably just a bit below the uh, Moto G, in my opinion. I think the Moto G has a very you know excellent screen for the the price, but uh, it's certainly above things such as the Xperia SP and uh, the Xperia Z1. Uh, so. Uh, Nice job in regards to the screen. Uh, in regards to the uh, actual specifications, again, it's nothing to get excited about. It's a quad core uh, Adreno 305 GPU with uh, a quad core 1.2 gigahertz Snapdragon 400, and uh, that's an A7 architecture. So uh, performance will be roughly the same as the Moto G. Uh, and uh, in my use of it, I've not found there to be any significant lags. Uh, even doing like uh, more intensive stuff, such as using the maps. I think that the Snapdragon 400 is a very capable chip. And it's good because it keeps the price low as well. As you can see, most things like maps is very smooth, very little lag, multitasking as well, you know, very, uh, very nice performance. Uh, I'm not sure of the actual benchmarks of the device, but uh, I'm guessing that it's similar to the Moto G, so I'm not going to run that. But uh, yeah, after using the device, I think that uh, Sony have done a very good job at optimizing it and making the experience very uh, smooth and buttery. It doesn't benefit from KitKat optimizations, unfortunately, because it is running 4.3. But uh, I think most people will be happy with the performance on the device. Uh, it does have one gig of RAM, so... Uh, would have been nice if they put 1.5 gigabytes in there just for a bit of future proofing, but uh, I guess it's to keep the price low. Uh, in regards to the battery life, I'd say that the battery life's a strong point of the device, definitely. Uh, in combina combination with the, the efficient processor, uh, with the, the battery rated at 2,000... Uh, 300 mAh, you're going to have uh, an easy uh, time with the battery. You know, this can easily last a day and a half uh, with moderate to heavy usage. Uh, you do also benefit from Sony's suite of uh, power management applications, uh, such as stamina mode, low battery mode, etc. So you can whitelist certain apps to, to sync and run when you want. However, I don't think most people will need to use those things because, as I said, the battery is very good. Uh, and you can, it means as well that uh, you can keep the screen brightness on quite uh, high so that uh, will get rid of any uh, niggles you may have with the viewing angles. Uh, in regards to the camera, the camera is an 8 megapixel, as I mentioned, uh, and can be accessed quickly by just holding down the physical shutter button. Uh, it, is, uh, it takes uh, 8 megapixel shots using either Superior Auto, which uh, will automatically identify the scene, as you can see. It's uh, working away, trying to see what's happening. Uh, if I put my hand there or something and it should detect that it's a macro shot and that's quite good of Sony to do that seem to go away then but uh, you, if you don't like the superior auto you can uh, put
put a whole load of different settings on if you want. You can uh, use the same AR effects that you get on the Z1, such as uh, the dinosaur effect, which I'm quite a fan of. Which makes the uh, device quite interesting. Uh, but uh, if you're more concerned with the actual um, usage of the camera, I'll come out of that and go back into it. Uh, you can uh, go to manual mode, which then allows you to change uh, the resolution of your pictures or put on HDR mode, which is quite good. Uh, you can control the ISO, the image stabilization. Uh, I'd say that uh, in general performance, the pictures come out decent when there's uh, good lighting. However, I'd say that uh, a weak point is generally, generally in low light. It tends to be very grainy. Uh, I think uh, this has been well picked up on by many reviewers that uh, you're going to have to use the flash with this device to take some semblance of a decent picture when you're in a club or something. But uh, the video recording as well, you know, it's passable, but nothing special. Uh, it's, uh, I'd say it's probably roughly the same as the Moto G. Uh, you can, can you can do it in full HD or just HD mode. Uh, so uh, nothing special in regards to the video recording gets the job done. But not a patch on you know the Z1 or something like that. Uh, you can uh, obviously do panorama uh, and all sorts of other nice little effects that Sony's built into the device. So uh, yeah, I think that uh, you know the battery, uh, the camera is quite nice. Uh, it's not the best, but for this type of price, there are going to be some compromises. Um, as I mentioned, uh, it does have uh, micro SD expandability, and it does have eight gigs internal storage, so that might fill up quite quickly. Sony does build in quite a lot of uh, apps on its devices such as uh, Walkman, uh, Xperia Lounge, uh, Sony Select, uh, the ability to connect to your PlayStation 4. Some people may use these things, some people may not. Uh, however, there are some useful things on there, such as Video Unlimited and Sony Unlimit uh, Music Unlimited, which allows you to download tracks quite quickly so uh you know it's some people like these things some people don't but personally if i don't like them then i'm just going to install a custom launcher it does run a uh, timescape ui which is uh, quite nice as well you know it uh, gets the job done uh, it's very subjective whether you prefer that or you know a more stock kind of uh, interface uh, but uh, yeah, you know, I think uh, in general, this is a very uh, capable device. It does have 4G, uh, NFC, Bluetooth, etc. Everything that you need. Uh, it does also have all the audio optimizations you get on the Z1 under the Walkman app. Uh, so sound quality is very good. Uh, I'd say the sound quality through the speakers is a bit poor. Uh, when I said sound quality is quite good, I meant through the headphone jack. Uh, but when you when you're actually using the speakers, it can be a bit, a little bit low. And a bit muffled. Uh, sorry about that, I got uh, interrupted a bit. 
uh, but I'm back again now. So, uh, yeah, as I was saying, the uh, sound quality from the uh, the output from the speakers is a bit poor, uh, but, uh, you know, it's to be expected, I guess. It's similar to the Z1. Uh, I don't think Sony's really mastered the art of getting the sound out good through the speaker, but it's very good through the headphones. I have tested that. Uh, and all, and call quality is also quite uh, decent enough to be used. Uh, so you know, all in all, I think this is a you know excellent mid ranger. Uh, I think it's certainly a competitor to the Moto uh, G 4G version, uh, and I, I certainly think that uh, you should uh, give it some consideration if you're looking for something that looks a bit more premium. Uh, but if you're looking for something with a very good camera, then you probably would be better with a Windows phone of a similar price. Uh, I think the camera is uh, the area where this phone is let down a little bit. And also, it's not really the most up-to-date Android, so uh, just be aware of that. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, I hope that uh, you found this video informative. And if you did, please subscribe or like the video. Cheers!